No, I know, I know, I'm a little late on this part three, but hey, better late than never, right? Hello, my name is Jonas and today it's finally time to turn this design into a real app. And I know it's been a long wait, but we're finally doing this. And before we can do that, I want to make some changes to this design because originally did this based on like an Android design or Android device. So now that I'm building this, I want to use or I will be using mainly an iOS simulator to build the app. So I just want to make sure the design works on an iOS device too. So I'll do these changes quickly and then we actually start building that. So a quick montage here. So these are the changes that I ended up doing and um, well I got a little carried away with the changes but here it is here they are and let's see the prototype so I added these timestamps here and made the list items a bit more like gave them a bit more room to breathe and then also actually build a prototype that has the interaction going between uh, the two views or states basically and then tweak the colors a little bit but yeah those are basically the changes but i'm running out of time today so let's switch days so i think we're now ready to move on from the design and jump into the code or programming side so let's switch to the code editor so here we have an empty React Native template project, so nothing outstanding here yet. And I think now is a good moment to go over the uh, different technologies that we're going to be using to build this. So this is going to be a React Native project, obviously. So it means that we're going to be using React and React Native with TypeScript. And then to style everything, I'll be using style components and then I'll probably need some kind of uh, state management so then for that I'll be using Redux most likely. Might change but most likely Redux. So I think we're ready to begin building this. So the first actual thing we're gonna build is to add the correct font in the, the project and if I remember correctly what I need to do is just create an asset folder. Alright now I got the font <laughs> working finally so all I had to do was to add the fonts here into the assets folder and then into the fonts folder um, add fonts like the files the true type font files here and then uh, create the recognitive config.js file and then add these uh, values here and point to the assets slash fonts uh, folder and then run just uh, run yarn react native link whoops link to link the fonts with the native projects. Although I won't be running this now because I have already done that. And then you just uh, rebuild and 
well, you should really rebuild just in case and also restore the metro bundler. And then it works. And now we can finally continue and start really building this. And next, I think I'll tackle creating the theme. Alright, let's have a quick recap of creating the theme here. So, for some reason, uh, Style Components or React Native decided that, hey, it's not okay to uh, declare your colors like this. Like it was, it was complaining about these quotes around here, but this is the only way I can define the color here. And how did I fix this? Well, I didn't. It just fixed itself somehow at some point when I was reloading it just like hey it works now What the hell? But it works now so yeah anyway a quick recap so uh, to create a like a global theme with style components you create this uh, styled d.ts file and you extend or like you extend the default theme uh, from uh, style components, which and by default is empty, so you just fill in your theme of the properties in your theme, or actually the structure of your theme here in the styled d.ts file, and then uh, I created a theme folder with a root theme, and then the root theme has a type of the default theme and then I can define the actual values in the theme here. <clears throat> so this is like a centralized place for the whole theme and whenever we make changes here they are reflected across the whole app which is very handy with the ex expectation that you actually use these in your styles and well we are going to be using this. And then uh, all you need to do is just apply the theme provider from style components or actually just wrap your whole application with the theme provider and actually uh, like inject or apply or give it the theme that you actually defined here. And now we can use the theme across our styles, which happens like this here. Then we can just start building the actual layout, finally, thank god.
Okay, well, for you that was probably like a couple of minutes, but for me this was several days, so a lot has changed uh, since then, and it's time to do another uh, quick recap of what I ended up doing and how I ended up doing stuff. So, uh, initially uh, I built the theme to be this uh, object, a really big object with with like nested objects, for example here in the color, well, it was like color panel button equal store and like super deep and that was a problem because I wanted to create, uh, where is it, it's here, I wanted to create these uh, helper functions uh, so I could easily access the colors or dimensions or fonts within the style component uh, styles. So what I ended up doing was to ditch this structure and prefer uh, that the individual like sections are only one layer deep, meaning that, for example, colors are only one layer deep. So it's just, for example, the panel is just separated into panel dash button dash delete glyph color. So this means that I can easily then here in the color uh, style details I build this utility function that takes in the theme color uh, keys and then returns uh, a color from the theme according to the path given. And let me show you an example from the numpad button here. So here, for example, this is a super nice syntax to use and it gives you like full uh, auto-completion so you just start uh, typing uh, panel and then you can see like, oh, I want button, what was it? It was button text, color, like this, super simple. Uh, instead of doing this, which was uh, the case previously. But yeah, this was the syntax that I had to use previously if I wanted to keep using this this structure. So you see why I switched to this, and I don't know if you if you saw it from the time lapse how I ended up building the layout from for the. Uh, different button sections, but here is here is that super quickly. So here, instead of uh, declaring everything on the actual like structure by hand, I, I just have this like configuration object that I map over, and then the map returns the correct components and draws them to the UI. So. The configuration object is uh, just a multi-dimensional array, which actually me just means that it's an array of arrays. And here, each of these sub-arrays is just one line here on the UI, and each item here in the array is just 
a single button on the UI. So super simple stuff actually. It was quite a similar like scenario here for the operation buttons, but here the configuration object is like significantly more complex because I need to be able to control the uh, button background color, the icon, uh, the icon size, and also be able to add uh, what is the linear gradient if I need to. And now with this, it is possible to actually add every, all of that within just this configuration. Okay, and th the next thing we need to do here is to build the list item component over there. And the list item component looks like this, which should be really easy to do since it's like one, two, three lines of text and uh, like a line divider here. So this shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go. I think we're done. Like, not not done done, but the UI is done. We have the uh, input panel and the list items here, or at least some sample list items. And I'll quickly show you uh, how I did this or uh, what the list item is made out of. So basically it's just a container which has two rows, a row for the timestamp and the equation and then another row for the results or oh, for the result single result here and then just a property to control should it show this like active color or this inactive color and if I show you the prototype here quickly the idea is that while you are entering a new equation that's the active color and all the previous ones are inactive until you scroll down and reveal the all of the previous calculations and then those also become like active versions of themselves and it's nicer to browse so that's it basically also i want to ask you would you like me to go over the code changes like more thoroughly or uh, I mean like more in depth or would you prefer just having like a high level overview of all the changes that I made let me know in the comment section down below I would really appreciate that thank you all right so to quickly recap in this episode we build the different UI components for the app which includes the input panel and all the buttons there and then the individual list items and its variations and uh, that is going to be everything that I'll be building in this episode and in the next episode we will we'll be diving into uh, gestures, animations, state management, state management which means basically turning this into an actual functioning application. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, if you did, please leave a like and also consider subscribing down below and if you are interested about the source code, I will be linking the code repository in the video description down below, so check it out and until next time, bye bye!